What were the findings of your study? So the findings were that uh, our 3D printed tablets were bioequivalent to the drug that is on the market. Um, so we tested it against the Rivatio uh, tablets, which is uh, a tablet containing 20 milligrams of sildenafil. Um, and uh, our tablets contain 10 milligrams of sildenafil. So uh, our healthy participants had to take two 3D printed tablets to get an equal dose. Uh, but uh, when we uh, measured their blood samples, uh, so we measured them uh, from uh, time point zero until uh, time point 12, uh, we took multiple measurements, and uh, when we uh, compared the measurements from uh, the uh, 3D printed sildenafil compared to the uh, Rivatio sildenafil, we found that they uh, that the uh, blood concentrations of sildenafil were equal to each other, um, so that we could conclude bioequivalence. That's reassuring. Now, what are the implications of your work? I mean. Is it realistic to think of keeping a 3D printer in the pharmacy and keeping canisters of the stock material on the shelf and then printing personalised tablets when needed for individual patients? Yeah, so I think it's very much feasible to keep a 3D printer in the pharmacy. Um, and uh, we are here in a hospital pharmacy, uh, but I think it also applies to the community uh, pharmacies that even they can have a 3D printer um, because they're not really that big and not the ones that we use anyway. Um, so they are really bench top, uh, to, so to say, uh, in size. Um, and it, exactly if you can keep stock mixtures, um, then you can easily produce the 3D printers or the 3D printed tablets, sorry. <laughs> um, what I think is the main uh, struggle with that still is the quality control because uh, while we have the possibility to uh, check our uh, tablets uh, before they go to the patients, uh, most pharmacies will not have that opportunity. Um, so at this point we are still looking into uh, how the quality control should take place before uh, the printers can actually safely go uh, to community pharmacies, other hospital pharmacies that do not have the uh, possibilities of uh, extensive quality control, which might be necessary at the moment still. Hmm. And, and how do you think this might work in the future? We would like to see that um, uh, stock mixtures can be produced by the pharmaceutical industry uh, so that we don't have to do that laborious work ourselves at the pharmacy with all uh, the um, uh, implications for the operators as well, because they still have the drug powders with which you have to work, um, which you do not want to have in, in most pharmacies, especially if they don't have the compounding facilities that we do. And lastly, what needs to happen before these type of tablets can be used in, in clinical practice? I mean, how long before patients benefit from these type of products? Uh, a lot of the information we already have. Um, so based on that, we can say, yes, they can be used in clinical practice. Um, but as I said, the quality control is still one question. Um, because it is still such a new drug product, we are still also figuring out uh, how the process goes and we're still finding out new things. And I think everyone in the 3D printing research world is, uh, is familiar with what I'm uh, saying here. We are still getting familiar with the technique. Um, so uh, we need to be absolutely sure that these 3D printed tablets are of good quality be go before they go to the patients. Um, so that's why at the moment uh, still extensive quality control is necessary. Um, and um, I think uh, if you do that, uh, then it's fine to give the tablets to patients, then they actually can be treated with it. Um, but we have to make sure that the tablets are of good quality before we give it to them, because um, if anything goes wrong, then I uh, am afraid that the whole 3D printing of pharmaceuticals is being put to a halt. Um, and that's something that I do not want. Um, I think this is a wonderful technique that can be uh, of benefit for a lot of patients. 
Um, so I uh, really want, I really hope to see this uh, being implemented very soon and very safely. Yeah. Iris Lafaber, thank you very much for talking to us about this important project. That really has been tremendously interesting. We look forward to seeing how it develops. For more information about Ms. Lafaber's work, please visit our website using the links in the description and be sure to sign up for more news, videos and journals. For updates straight to your inbox, please follow the links below. And thanks for watching. Thank you.